Hello Croix or Fulcher, welcome back to the channel, old boy here. And today I just wanted to talk to you about an article that was recently published in the Smithsonian magazine regarding a purple dye factory that was discovered on the Greek island of Aegina. Let's get into it. The article, published on the 14th of June, states that archaeologists have uncovered a 3,600-year-old purple dye factory while excavating two Mycenaean buildings on the Greek island of Aegina. The building, which is dated to around 1600 BC, was found to contain fragments of pottery which were covered with the residue of dye pigment. In addition to this, grinding tools and heaps of broken shells were also discovered, which has led experts to conclude that the site was used for the sole production of what the article calls Mycenaean purple. A lab analysis of the pigment residue later confirmed that it was indeed the dye, which was extracted exclusively from the banded dye murex. Here's what the article has to say. On an island in Greece, researchers have discovered a 3,600-year-old workshop that once turned out a rare purple dye coveted by royalty and made from snail glands. Archaeologists were excavating recently in the Bronze Age town of Colonna on the Greek island of Aegina when they discovered two Mycenaean buildings. As the researchers write in a study published in the journal PLOS One, the buildings date to the 16th century BCE, and the older one contained pigmented ceramics, grinding tools, and heaps of broken mollusk shells, all indicative of a purple dye factory. In this workshop, ancient Greeks produced the vibrant pigment known as Mycenaean purple, or as the Romans called it, Tyrian purple. First manufactured by the Phoenicians in present-day Lebanon, the dye was extracted from the mucus of the Mediterranean's carnivorous sea snails. Across the region, only the rich owned anything dyed Mycenaean purple, as the colour's production was painstaking. As Roman historian Pliny the Elder once wrote, thousands of snails were required to produce a single ounce of purple dye. Its creators had to crush snails' shells, extract their tiny glands, mix them with salt water, and let the concoction steep in the sun, per the study. The result was a deep purple, lilac, or dark red colour, which was used on textiles and paintings. The fragments of pottery the researchers found on the site were probably containers for dye. As Lydia Berger, an archaeologist at the University of Salzburg, notes, the pottery's pigments are so high quality that they could still be extracted and used to dye clothing today. The site also contains stones used for grinding, a waste pit, and piles of crushed snail shells. Eventually, snail purple would become the colour of royalty. In the first century CE, Roman Emperor Julius Caesar named Tyrian purple his official colour and inspired successive emperors to don the same hue. But back in the 1500s BCE, the colour was just beginning to be produced. At the time, Colonna was a dense, fortified, small town, says Berger, whose inhabitants produced and traded lots of different handcrafted products and raw materials like Mycenaean dye, which wasn't yet exclusive. Though the dye factory is in an urban area, an oddity among dye workshops, its coastal location is ideal for purple production. As the researchers write, snails had to be caught and kept alive until their glands were harvested. By analysing the shells in this particular workshop, researchers concluded that just one snail species was used there, the banded dye murex. Interestingly, it wasn't the only animal killed at the site. As Newsweek's Aristos Georgiou writes, Archaeologists also found the burnt bones of several piglets and lambs. Researchers suggest these young mammals were sacrificed in the workshop as part of a ritual meant to somehow bless the dye's production. As they write in the study, the ancient site not only proves that purple dye was manufactured in cities, but also provides new insights into the technological and possibly spiritual background of the process.
The peer review journal, which is being referenced by the article in the Smithsonian Magazine, was published on PLOS One on the 12th of June. The journal mentions the Minoan influence present at the site, which they say could be indicative of the fact that the purple production may have been adopted originally from Crete. Quote, the striking Minoan influence, which is generally obvious in the material evidence of the Middle Bronze Age settlement at Colonna, also suggests an adoption of purple production from Crete, where the technology had been known at least since the early 2nd millennium BC. End quote. The sources being cited in the journal come from the work of Dr. Robert Stiglitz, a professor of Mediterranean studies, who has written several journal articles regarding the Minoan origins of Tyrian purple. Here is an abstract from one of his journals. Quote, Tyrian purple was the most expensive dye in the ancient world, manufactured from the secretions of species of the Mediterranean mollusk Murex. The discovery and distribution of royal purple are commonly credited to the Phoenicians, yet archaeological and epigraphic data from the Aegean suggests that the royal purple industry first developed on Crete. Before 1750 BCE, Minoans on Crete and some Minoanized islanders, such as those on Kythera, were already manufacturing sea purple, generating an industry that then caught on and prospered throughout the Eastern Mediterranean. End quote. Interestingly enough, the pot fragments which contained dye residue on the internal face still elicited an odour once exposed to moisture. Quote, In the central eastern part of area K10, we found two ceramic fragments with adhering residues of purple pigments at the interior. The slightly water-soluble layer of paint emitted a fishy odour when exposed to water. So far, a further six pottery fragments with small residues of purple pigment have been identified within the finds from K10. The fragments come from different pottery shapes, which could have been used either during dye processing or for the storage or transport of the finished dye. End quote. Finally, in conclusion, the journal states that the site and the analysis of the finds proves the existence of an intra-urban purple dye workshop. I highly recommend you take a look at the journal and I'll leave a link for it in the description box below. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments and I look forward to reading everybody's discussions. As always, thanks for the continued support you all show for me and the channel, I really appreciate it. Catch you on the next one, old boy, out.